this is Selma Schimmel, and you are looking live at the great city of Chicago, which is once again playing host to the American Society of Clinical Oncology, ASCO. This is ASCO's 49th annual meeting, and this year's theme could not be more appropriate, Building Bridges to Conquer Cancer. More than 30,000 of the world's foremost cancer specialists are here, and so is our Advocacy in Action feature, making our 15th appearance at ASCO, and one of our very best. I'm one of those people who doesn't think we should get rid of the label palliative care because I think it's a definition that's accepted worldwide and I don't think we should suddenly change it because people are afraid of the word. And, and, and when we talk about being afraid of the word, we live in a culture where we're very, we're youth oriented, we're beauty oriented, death is a subject that we are so very uncomfortable addressing. And I ask myself, because of all the work we do overseas, where there's a, very, a different philosophy there, sometimes less is, is more. Here we have treated and we treat and sometimes we over-treat. When a patient may choose, you know, I don't want to live for chemo. That's not, I don't want to live for treatment. I know that's going to apply for me. At some point, if all I'm doing is I'm, I'm living from one protocol to the next, but the quality of my life is absent, then what am I gaining? How do we, one, begin to help people reckon with the fact that it is not taking treatment is a choice. It's an okay choice, and it is a sound clinical choice. And how do we help other meaningful loved ones, friends, and family members from something like this. You're not trying hard enough. You're giving up the fight. You gotta fight. And then, of course, when someone dies, they lost the battle. They fought hard. How do we overcome the cultural barriers of perception in our country? We can't even look death in the face. Well, no, the death panels were the perfect example. That discussion as if talking about the fact that we're all going to die was going to make it happen. So I don't know the answer, honestly. I think some of it is trying to push patients to ask the right questions because we're not good about offering it. And I think the questions are, what are reasonable expectations from this therapy? Is there going to come a time when no treatment is actually the right choice, no treatment for the cancer, not no treatment at all? And I think we need to be helping people see that sometimes people live better without treatment, that it isn't giving up, it's fighting a different, for a different goal, and that is quality of life above. It's treating the patient, not the disease. It's thinking, what do I want? What do you want? What does my family want? Not, can I make the cancer shrink? I, I guess oh. I would add, as someone who's been living with metastatic disease a long time, uh, 10 years, um, I think it behooves us all to talk about death with our family or to listen when a family member dies, the conversation that goes on about that person's death. And maybe they didn't even die of cancer. But what, you know, I think it's important for your children, let's say, who ultimately, I've heard once, be kind to your children because they're going to make the final decisions for you, which is an important point. Um, but uh, anyway, you know, let people know, do you want to, uh, the very parameters that Selma talked about, do you want to keep trying treatments right to the end, or do you want to be uh, comfortable but able to talk to your loved ones without being in, uh, say, a, a coma because of treatments? Uh, so I think that's one uh, response that I think advocacy organizations have to put their foot in the water about that and maybe discuss that when, when you have uh, appropriate sessions with patients. And then the other thing, I think doctors, when they come out and you receive that metastatic diagnosis, I think it behooves the doctor to say, you know, we can do several things for you. I can't right now cure you of metastatic, say, breast cancer. I can give you treatments to shrink your tumor, or I have patients who choose not to have treatments at some point. I don't think you hear many oncologists say that because they have a mindset they, they want to help you, and helping 
is defined as lessening your cancer burden. So I think it's going to take a change in conversation, and I think this will come because as I heard at this conference, uh, we're going to have a lot more cancer in the future. I think now is really the time to start this dialogue, and we're, we're only going to be able to say this for a year, right? The, according to the SEER data, the average age of a diagnosis is 67. This is now the lead age, 67 is the lead edge of the baby boomers. So I really think that this is an opportunity for us, just given the traits of the baby boomers, and a number of them have been caring for their families. Um, we sort of have gotten through the death panel discussion. You don't feel that same intensity that you felt a few years ago around this death panel discussion. So I feel like we've got, now is the time to really take advantage of these demographics, the educational levels, the level of empowerment, and also the, the, the difference of the younger generation coming along to do exactly what you're suggesting, Selma, and, and really put some of those messages in the marketplace, help people really understand um, when this begins, what it is, how it can really enhance quality of life alongside active treatment. Linda, could you please speak to us a bit about the Sea Change initiatives? Sure. So the Sea Change initiatives, we are um, doing a number of things. Number one, we are trying to establish guidelines for institutions that would be broad in nature, but still create some level of um, quality in terms of what your what your palliative care team would look like, who would comprise that team, what um, what professional credentials would they have, when would they be available, what type of services would they provide. We're also working on um, communicating, right? So how do we communicate to the general public, to families, to lawmakers um, on this particular issue? And um, uh, um, we're, we're doing that through a number of channels. We're doing it through our own work. The work groups typically are, are comprised of uh, professionals who are working in their own domain, so uh, academia, government, nonprofit, um, and I'm sure I'm forgetting somebody, I apologize for that, industry, so that they can really talk, think about their own constituency and then go deliver the message and, and bring expertise from, from each of those. We're also working with other organizations to make this happen. So um, the American Cancer Society, for example, they have two pieces of legislation that are currently making their way through, and we as um, the Cancer Support Community will launch a policy institute later this month. We're carrying their bills to the Hill to really talk about, you know, this is a, this is a demonstration of integrating psychosocial support into palliative care. Because, you know, truthfully, Craig hit it right on. One of the things we really need to think about is um, with the new world of, of medicine and, and care coverage, we need to also talk about how that's going to roll out, you know, because in today's environment, physicians who are doing visits for medical services, if you will, and I'm trying to really sort of um, to explain this, so I apologize about the terminology, they're reimbursed more than um, a palliative care physician that's going in to do an analysis. And if you're a nurse doing a palliative care visit, there's no reimbursement whatsoever. So, 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 so tackling these approaches from this rounded, uh, rounded way is incredibly important because you can have the workforce, and Sea Change is also working on the workforce piece of that, as is um, ASCO and ONS. Um, you can have those people available, but if there's no reimbursement, it's a really hard way to, to deliver those, those type of services. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Jamie Van Rowan. Thank you so much. Shirley <laughs> Woods. Linda has Helen. Miller, Miller. <laughs> from Cancer Care. Thank you all.